What's up, everybody? This is Steve, I'm a guitar player from New Jersey, and I am making this video to talk about the Charvel Pro Mod that I had last week that I was so excited about, and guess what? I didn't keep it. Um, the enthusiasm was way higher in the moment of gas, and I'm not sure if I'm done with Charvel, but I uh, ultimately came down to a few reasons for returning it. Uh, the money, obviously, was if you saw my video, uh, I liked the guitar. And then the ultimate thing at the end for me was, do I want to keep something, you know, that's 700 bucks in this economy? Well, the answer would be a resounding yes if I love it. Uh, you know, I'm obviously very careful about what I spend my money, but I don't spend my money on, you know, just anything. So... Um, it is disposable income that I do have to spend, but that wasn't the reason why I returned it. There was a few other things. Um, I'm not a metal guy. I mean, I love metal and I can play some metal here and there, but I just can't get on with those Seymour Duncan distortions. And I love Seymour's. I have them pretty much in all of my guitars, but they're basically JB and 59s. Now, the Pro Mod, unfortunately, comes with the distortion pickups, which for me are just way too hot, and I just couldn't dial them in. And, and before anybody goes and says, oh, you didn't try anything, I tried everything. I got a screwdriver, the EQ, wasn't feeling any of it. So that was the primary reason, because the next thing is going to be like, well, why don't you just go out and buy you know, some new pickups? Okay, I could either do that or just go buy a San Dimas, which has JB and a 59 in it. So I think what I'm gonna do is hold out for a San Dimas with a JB and a 59 in it. Um, there's no point in spending another 200 bucks on pickups when the guitars come stock with that. So that was one thing. Uh, the other thing primarily was cosmetic. And a couple of things that probably just happened because of the winter. One was it had some pretty wicked fret sprout, which, you know, that's an easy fix. Um, but that was, you know, certainly not a joy to really play too long on it. But again, we would have kept it. We would have gotten that addressed. Then, then the things that kind of, I guess, perturbed me. Um, the guitar felt cheap. And it felt cheap in a way where the, the super switch, the, you know, the uh, five-way super switch felt really really cheap now look here's here's what i'm playing with here okay this is my ibanez you've seen the video this is substantial you know it's got me to it um the one on the charvels felt flimsy i was like wow this is you know you're paying a thousand dollars for a new guitar and that's what you're getting so i was a little you know not happy about that i didn't think it was going to break but it just felt cheap and then the other thing that I noticed that I didn't really care for, uh, you know, I'm just using my Ibanez as a point of reference. I felt like these knobs were so flimsy feeling, like they felt cheap and plasticky. And I was like, this is a Floyd Rose 1000. This should be a good quality piece of equipment. So, you know, again, that's really more just me being over nitpicky. But if I'm being honest and I'm paying, you know, $700 for a guitar, Let's be honest, I want it to be as perfect as I'm gonna get it. Uh, the guitar played great. Um, you know, everything about it was a wonderful instrument. The other thing that I just, the last thing that I didn't care about was the, uh, the back of the neck was so, I don't wanna use the word dry, but it was just so raw. It felt like you were playing on raw wood and that you could potentially get splinters. Now, I know you're not going to get splinters, and I know there's ways to address that. Uh, but again, it just kind of made for a lackluster playing experience. So I think, you know, I, I kind of, you know, if I'm being completely honest and I'm using the benchmark as this, you know, 550 as my shredder guitar, this is really like getting a Charvel is kind of filling a need for me. And the need really is I want one. I don't need one. I have the shredder guitar. I have more than one shredder guitar. I, you know, I'd mentioned this. I had a Charvel. I actually had two Charvels stolen um, when I was, you know, younger. And I've been trying to replicate that without spending 
fifteen hundred dollars, you know, on on them, you know, and looking for something on the cheap. So the quest continues. A um, little disappointed, but at the end of the day, I feel good that you know I returned it and that this wasn't the right instrument. And you know, it's part of the it's part of the game. You know, fortunately. Um, Guitar Center has a great policy about returning stuff. And let's be honest, you know, I've bought a lot of stuff from Guitar Center where like, I feel like, you know what? It works in their favor more often than not because I keep more than I return. So, you know, hats off to Guitar Center. They get a lot of crap uh, from people saying this, that, and the other thing about their service. And I I'm always gonna defend Guitar Center. I, I know I'm probably in the minority, but I would rather buy from Guitar Center than a small vendor. And the reason being is because I know once I take that guitar out of that store, out of a small vendor or like a private reverb place, I'm gonna have a real rough time returning it. And I'm not saying that I'm, you know, gonna return every guitar, but I wanna get it home on my gear and on my time. I wanna set it up the way that I want it. And, you know, that's a luxury that I really feel Guitar Center affords people. And that's something that, uh, like I said, they've won that side of that um, card game. They have had thousands upon thousands of dollars of my money on gear over the past 20 years. So that's my story, and uh, we'll see you soon.